<clears throat> Thank you very much, Comrade Paul, and, and program directors, Comrade Mohammed, the Dango, the Duarte, and the Whitley families, Deputy President of the ANC, Comrade uh, Didi Mabuza, and the rest of the leaders of the ANC, the COSATU and the Communist Party. And comrades, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you will see that uh, in your program, uh, I'm speaking at five o'clock. <clears throat> so it's five o'clock. <laughs> So let me make it brief, comrades, because we're an hour and a half late. Um, we've convened, of course, here to say, uh, to pay tribute uh, to a revolutionary and to say uh, the final farewell to, to her. And uh, all of us have spoken very, very well indeed um, to explain why why Comrade Jesse won that particular accolade of being called a revolutionary? And as a, as a revolutionary, Comrade Jesse would have understood, understood a number of things. One of them was that as revolutionaries and as a revolutionary movement, uh, we really exist to serve the people. What justifies our existence? To serve the people with no expectation of any reward to these revolutionaries except the reward of fulfilling the aspirations of the people. Another lesson she would have learned and she did as a revolutionary was to respect the truth. Always to respect the truth. So today we, we pay this tribute to this revolutionary, who among other things as a revolutionary is identified by those two factors, service to the people and respect for the truth. Now I'm quite certain that uh, many of us say, uh, today and in other days have made the correct statement that we need to to honor the legacy the legacy of this revolutionary comrade Jesse Duarte and indeed we would all of us be saying long live the spirit of comrade Jesse Duarte quite correctly now comrades in my view too to honor that legacy and to respect what we mean when we say long, long live their spirit means there are a number of things that we must do. I'm talking particularly about the comrades in the ANC and maybe even broadly in the alliance. I'll be very brief about these matters because we've run out of time. But they are important to respect what we ourselves say when we say we honor the legacy of Comrade Jesse Duarte. It must mean some things practical, not slogans. In the a last ANC National Conference in December in 2017, took an important decision and that decision said that the ANC must renew itself and it said for its own survival that the, if the ANC did not renew itself it will perish this is four and a half years later 
National uh, Policy Conference of the ANC is meeting in a week's time. And on that agenda, one of the matters is the renewal of the ANC. A very, very simple, straightforward matter. One of the things we're meeting to discuss is what, in fact, do we understand by renewal of the ANC four and a half years later? So I'm saying, comrades, one of, that's one of the things we must address. Um, it's a challenging task, it's a challenging job, because even in the 49th conference, National Conference of the ANC, which was in December 1994, even then, comrades at conference were saying, we've begun to inherit people into the ranks of the ANC who are not ANC. People are coming into the organization in order to use it as a step ladder to positions of state power in order to accumulate wealth for themselves. <laughs> that statement, that message has been made in all conferences of the ANC since then. So I'm saying renewal is going to mean, among other things, ridding ourselves of these people who've joined the movement for self, for self service, to serve themselves, to enrich themselves. It's a very good, a difficult challenge. We will have to go beyond deciding what is the definition to acting on the renewal. That is to honor the legacy of Comrade Jess. Correctly, the movement says that we face with challenges of unemployment, of poverty, inequality. Very correct. In terms of our commitment to serve the people, we have to address those issues. But the fact of the matter, comrades, is that as I'm standing here, as we're sitting, all of us here, we do not have an agreed national plan to address these challenges. We don't have it. There is no national plan to address these challenges of poverty, unemployment, inequality. It doesn't exist. I'm saying to service, to serve the people, it requires that we, we, we address this. The Comrade President Cyril Ramaphosa when he delivered the State of the Nation address yeah, in February. That's why he said, in a hundred days, there must be agreed a comprehensive social compact to address these matters. Nothing has happened. Nothing. Yeah. I'm saying to, to honor the legacy of Comrade Jesse, we've got to do something about that. Yeah. We must address local government. Yeah. You will see now all of these reports from the Auditor General that always come out and point a figure at the councils particularly which are led by the ANC. That level of government which is directly in contact with the people every day. What message are we communicating to these masses? I think part of the crisis in terms of local government is illustrated by what is happening in Mangaou. Paralyzed until national government has to intervene. And who are these people who are paralyzed in the Mangaou municipality? It's ANC people. They're fighting among themselves. That's nothing to do with serving the people of South Africa. It's got something else. 
who are these people? In Mangaung, who call themselves ANC, but in fact paralyze local government. I think we can all see the growth of lawlessness in our society. It's very visible. Every day you see all of these terrible crimes being committed. The other day, was it yesterday, people with guns just marched into a supermarket in Pinoni and uh, broad daylight. What are we doing about that? The new general secretary of the South African Communist Party, I think it was yesterday, he made a very a statement that worried me greatly. And he said, uh, our leadership is failing to discharge its responsibility to lead. He said the, the country is uh, on autopilot. And went on to say that uh, one of his fears is that uh, when that leadership wake up, wakes up to these responsibilities, it will be at the moment when the plane is about to crash. We may differ with that statement, but I think that it was made by General Secretary of the party means there is something that is wrong. We can't dismiss that's just dismiss that statement. I think to honor the legacy of Comrade Jesse, these are matters that we have to attend to. One of my fears, comrades, is that one of these days, we're talking about this with Comrade Mohammed, we're going to have our own version of the Arab Spring. You remember what happened in Tunisia, in Tunis, when that Arab Spring started. There was a street hawker vendor who got abused by the police. They beat him up and destroyed whatever he was selling. And that got the country angry. That's how that massive uprising took place, started in Tunisia. It's because uh, the problems were brewing under the surface. They just needed only that thing, a little spark. I'm saying one of my fears is that one of, one of these days is going to happen to us. You can't have so many people unemployed, so many people poor, people faced with this lawlessness I'm talking about, faced with a leadership in which they see these ANC people one after another are called corrupt. One day it's going to explode. I've been very fortunate in the last two weeks or so to get uh, invitations from our provincial leaders in a number of provinces. So I've been going around a bit And I'm very, very glad that, that uh, I've had that opportunity because it's brought me closer to ordinary members of the ANC. And there are many, many, many ordinary members of the ANC who are as concerned as you and I are about the state of the ANC. Who are not corrupt, who want to do something that this ANC of theirs becomes the ANC that is always been. That gives hope, comrades, hope that uh, we can indeed do the things, do the things that would show our respect for the legacy of Comrade Jesse Duarte. So we reposition ourselves to, so that this process of the renewal of the country 
of service to the people, uh, of doing all of these things that are going to mean truly a better life for the people, that they happen. That even for the movement, we address one of the things that Comrade Jesse addressed very correctly. When we're sitting there talking with the deputy president and Comrade Mohammed, we're saying um, we're very, very glad that we've had this attendance here. But there are many, many South Africans who are not here. Comrade Jesse raised this thing very sharply. Non-racialism is very, very fundamental to our movement. And that victory against racism in against South Africa to produce that non-racial South Africa must also reflect itself in us. We have to be a non-racial movement, but we are not. And because we are sitting here on the platform, we can see We are not a non-racial audience. It's a pointer to something that's wrong. Comrades, long live the spirit of Comrade Jesse Duarte. And we say, as we say that, we mean that we are truly, truly going to honor her legacy by attending to these things that I've tried to mention. Amanda. Thanks.